Let's talk a little LSU. They are making noise on Saturday evening. LSU landed four-star linebacker Tylen Singleton, the number 13 ranked linebacker in America and the 147th best overall. He's also the number five ranked player in the state. And last year, LSU lost out on six of the top 10 players in the state of Louisiana. Brian Kelly just seemingly could not recruit his home state. This year, it's different. Singleton's commitment is number 19 for LSU in the 24 class, and he's the 13th commitment in the state of Louisiana. They have now landed eight out of the top 10, and the only two uncommitted in the top 10 out of the state of Louisiana, the number one player in the state, Dominic McKinley, and the number two player in the state, <laughs> Wardell Mack. So can LSU finish it off with a clean sweep of the top 10? Sam, let's start with five-star defensive lineman Dominic McKinley, the number one player in the state. Who are the main teams in this race right now? Yeah, you, you talk about LSU locking in 10, going 10 for 10. Well, it really, the 10 for 10 loses it if it's 9 for 10 and Dominic McKinley heads out of state. Right now, there is a lot of out-of-state sentiment being echoed around the five-star defensive lineman from the Lafayette area. Oklahoma, Texas, and Texas A&M are the three teams you hear a lot of buzz about throughout mm -hmm. the summer. Of course, LSU is not going down easily. Um, with a new defensive line coach change, they are expected to get Dominic McKinley on campus this weekend for the Bayou Splash, one of their biggest weekends of the, of the summer. And it's a big opportunity for LSU because, like I said, Oklahoma is a team with a lot of buzz. Texas and Texas A&M also have a lot of buzz. And one thing's for sure, LSU has ground to make up. So getting the five-star defensive lineman on campus moves them in a better direction and a better chances of fulfilling that 10 for 10. That would be huge if they can get him on campus at the end of this month. But what are we looking at in terms of a timeline for a commitment for Dominic McKinley? Yeah, this is, um, you're hearing a lot of different buzz about this. People in his circle would like him to end this recruitment before his senior season. So Acadiana, his high school can make a run for a state championship. I'm talking to those same people in the circle. They might want a decision, but Dominic might not be ready at this point. Like I said, there are three out-of-state teams trending with him, and the home state team is not going away anytime soon. It seems like it's a very tight race at the top. I think he might need a couple more visits, and we'll see after this LSU visit if he feels a little bit closer to a decision going in-state or out-of-state. But this could stretch a little bit into the season from what I'm hearing. Yeah, it'll be inter interesting to see what he has to say coming out of this LSU visit, especially in terms of when he plans to make that final decision. All right, let's talk about the number two player in the state right now, Wardell Mack. Tell me, who are the main contenders in this one? Yeah, Wardell Mack is down to four, but it's really a three-team race. Texas got him on campus. Florida got him on campus in June for official visits. And after the, the June officials, you could definitely say that Texas – uh, etch their name as a, as a finalist when Wardell, Mack's make, Wardell Mack makes a decision at the end of this summer. But he's heading back to LSU on this Friday. It'll be his first time back in LSU since April for the spring game. I've had an RPM on LSU with Wardell Mack for, for several months at this point, and getting him back on campus close to a decision certainly looms large for the Tigers. But you also need to keep an eye out for the Gators. Mm -hmm. Corey Raymond, Jabbar Jaluk, and especially Billy Napier have been very hands-on in recruiting one of the best in the boot. We know that Billy Napier uh, is very familiar with New Orleans and recruiting Louisiana. So is Jaluk. So is Corey Raymond. They are expecting to get him in the swamp again, a second visit in as many months, and they are looking to, to make some noise with Wardell Mack. Yeah, I thought the Gators are probably LSU's top contender to land Mack, but now that Texas missed on Gibson, and I know they got Kobe Black on the board lean in their direction, but does this put a bigger priority on Wardell Mack for Texas now that they missed on Gibson. Absolutely. Um, Texas is looking to make a splash in the DB room. And obviously, Kobe Black, the five-star in-state from Waco, is at the top of their board. But missing on Selman Bridges, missing on Corey and Gibson, they want to add blue-chip talent to the secondary. Terry Joseph is the New Orleans guy and has been very hands-on recruiting Wardell Mack. Steve Sarkeesian has been at John Arrett High School, his high school in, in the West Bank of New Orleans, I think three times in the past seven months, from what I understand. They are all in for Wardell Mack, and they're hoping that if this recruitment goes beyond August, they can get him back on campus in the fall. Hmm. So where are you leaning right now? Do you have a pick in on Wardell Mack? I've had my pick on LSU for some time. I believe he's been a longtime LSU lean. There are members of his circle that are certainly fascinated with Texas and, and definitely not ignoring the hard push from Billy Napier and the Gators. 
But I think Frank Wilson taking control of this recruitment, getting him back on campus this Friday, I would not be surprised if, if the visits get canceled by this and we move closer to a decision. Mm. All right, we'll see how... We'll see if LSU can make the 10 for 10. Before I let you go, Sam, I want to talk Colin Simmons. I just talked with uh, Chad Simmons about him, but I got you on. I want to see how it kind of relates to LSU. He just announced that he's going to take this visit to LSU at the end of the month. I told Chad, I've been discounting the Tigers, but do you think now that they're going to get him back on campus, that LSU should be considered a main player for Colin Simmons? You absolutely have to. Um, I was in the same boat as, boat as you, Josh, for, for much of the spring and into the summer. Um, and, I, and I think I've said this on, on the inside scoop. I thought that, that A&M had become the biggest threat to Texas mm -hmm. um, throughout the spring. After the official visits in the summer, you can definitely say that Texas is out in front. They are all in on the five-star plus edge rusher from Duncanville, Colin Simmons. But the fact is, just like I mentioned with Frank Wilson getting involved, the associate head coach at LSU with, with guys like Tylen Singleton and Wardell Mack, he has also gotten involved in recruiting Duncanville's blue chippers. We know about Caden Durham, the running back. When Colin Simmons and Frank Wilson are, are starting to develop yeah. a relationship, it's no surprise that he's going to be at the Bayou Splash. I think this is coming down to two schools, Texas and LSU. And if a decision is made by the end of the summer, it's definitely going to come down to LSU or Texas. Yeah, I thought, you know, even though Texas is kind of running away with it on the recruiting prediction machine, I thought it was going to be Texas A&M that kind of slipped in there is the main competitor, but we're back to kind of where we were in the spring with LSU and Texas on top. It's going to be an intriguing visit when he goes to Baton Rouge at the end of the month. We'll talk more about it. Sam, thanks for stopping by the Inside Scoop today. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me and remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page.